Welcome everybody to Pub 101. We are very glad that you're here. Thank you for setting aside time to join us today. So on behalf of the Open Education Network team and community, as well as the Pub 101 committee, we really appreciate your interest in publishing open educational resources. We have been excited to start this time together with you. And we've been working hard to prepare the curriculum and these seven sessions so that they are applicable to your work and your goals and hopefully succinct and uh, respectful of your time. I would like to take a moment to thank the Pub 101 committee and the work that they have invested over the last couple of years. Um, on the next slide, you can see their faces. Many of them have joined us today in the call and you'll get to know many of them as facilitators in upcoming sessions. In addition to lending their experience and expertise to Pub 101, um, they've also been getting in there into the Canvas curriculum, which we will share with you shortly, uh, revising content, streamlining content, making sure that what we share with you over these next several weeks is um, is the best it can be. So it's a delight to work with them. I think you will find the same. They're also very generous colleagues who um, I'm sure would be happy to answer any additional questions you might have. As for me, my name is Karen Lauritsen. I am the publishing director with the Open Education Network. We are based at the University of Minnesota. I was just there last month. It was 30 degrees. Um, but totally doable for someone who lives in California. Uh, I've been working remotely here for about eight years in this role. And when I'm not doing things related to open education, I love to maintain a wildlife habitat garden. I've snuck in a few photos of my garden here in the slideshow. Um, I really like planting plants that are native to the area that were here before humans really developed things. Um, I had no idea I would get so into this 10 years ago, but here we are. So that's a little bit about me. In terms of our time together today, uh, I'll spend about probably a little under half our hour setting the scene in terms of what to expect with Pub 101, uh, provide some guidance or some thoughts on whether you're in the right place, but spoiler alert, the answer is yes. Uh, you're all very welcome and we're so glad that you're here. I'll talk a little bit more about what Pub 101 is, and then hopefully we can spend a little more than half of our time chatting with Gabby and Sunny about their experience publishing open textbooks. And so you can hear uh, directly from some colleagues about what their experience has been, particularly as they got their program started, some of the things that they've thought about and some of the things that they have learned as they've moved um, along in what can sometimes be an adventurous journey. Okay, so setting the scene. Um, for some of you, this may be your first firsthand experience with the Open Education Network. And so uh, that is one of the things that I love about Pub 101 and that gets me excited about this every year is the opportunity to meet more of you, to introduce you a little bit to the Open Education Network community. Um, we are a community of people who are working to advance open education. And our members now represent more than 1,700 institutions in the US, Canada, Australia, and the UK. And all of our work is guided by our guiding principles. Uh, they are that we contribute to the common good together, that we center equity and inclusivity in all that we do, that we're a community of action. We're not just talking about good ideas, we're putting them into place. Uh, we are humans first and foremost, and so we always try to keep that at the core. We act with integrity and in the spirit of Pub 101 and all of our programs, we really benefit from shared abundance. This is not about the handful of staff who are you know, working at the OEN. This is about the uh, hundreds bordering on thousands of people who are doing this work around the world and who generously support one another in terms of sharing what they've learned, their best practices, their templates, so that you don't have to start uh, from scratch or to feel like you're in it alone. This can be very isolating work. And many of you have a full plate of other responsibilities 
or you might be the only person at your institution working in open education. And so shared abundance is really critical to um, supporting the work that we do and continuing the incredible impact that uh, this community um, has been able to do so far. If you'd like to read a little bit more about our norms, uh, they're available there at the Z-Link. And Amanda Larson, who is the chair of the Pub 101 committee, is here and will be managing chat and sharing those links with you in the chat as well. So now I'm gonna talk more specifically about publishing within the open education context to continue to set our scene. So publishing is so important and integral to open educational practices because it provides an opportunity to include more voices and more perspectives in the educational experience. It provides opportunity to localize and indigenize content so that it's relevant to students, it's relevant to the communities in which it's taught. And it provides an, up, an opportunity to update text to reflect a current moment. So instead of having to wait for a new edition to come out two years from now, to reflect the latest and greatest um, recent history, you can update things much more quickly to include case studies, stories, interviews, multimedia, things that are happening right now. And publishing also includes an opportunity to include students in creating content in open pedagogical practices and really working together to create um, open textbooks and other OER that reflect a, a collective intent to share um, collective knowledge. Now, in terms of what publishing means, uh, the Pub 101 committee and I have joked that we could spend many, many a salon hour, many a cocktail hour discussing what publishing means. Um, and it's somewhat complicated by the fact that in our minds, it, it can mean like, oh, I just push this button and suddenly this new content is available online. And absolutely, that is publishing. Uh, but publishing can also mean adapting, editing, modifying an already existing resource. Uh, it has many synonyms like creation, authoring, writing, making. Publishing can mean having an institutional, an institutional repository and posting or archiving a document so that's available for people to access. It can mean working with a whole suite or a whole team of people copy editors, proofreaders, designers, co-authors. It can mean working with students. Uh, really publishing can mean so many things. And we want to kind of work under a large umbrella when we talk about publishing in Pub 101. Whatever it means to you, whatever you're capable of, whatever's in your capacity at your institution. And the answer might be nothing right now. And that's okay too. We really hope to show you in Pub 101 what publishing can involve, emphasize that you can pick and choose what you have the capacity to do at your institution, and to just get you thinking about some of the things to anticipate when publishing open textbooks. But we always mean to be inclusive. And so if ever you're thinking about your institution and what you can do there, and you're trying to connect what we're talking about in Pub 101 with where you're at, let us know. And we will try to um, think about your context more specifically, think about ways that you could modify or adapt the content that we're sharing so that it can work for you. Okay, continuing to set the scene here. Our intentions with Pub 101. We really hope that this is a friendly experience. Uh, I think you'll find us to be friendly, accessible folks. We want to hear questions from you. We want to engage in conversation. This is an informal publishing orientation. When we have created this content, we are thinking about those of you who will be supporting faculty authors. And every year I uh, receive questions about, oh, can I promote Pub 101 to my faculty? And if you are faculty, welcome. We're glad you're here. We, we only share the caveat that we really are thinking about librarians, instructional designers, and others at your team who are typically supporting and working with faculty authors. We have started talking about um, the potential to design a program specifically for faculty authors. So again, if you're a faculty author and you would like to be here, welcome. Uh, but we have been thinking about those who support 
uh, you in designing this content. With Pub 101, we want to provide a preview of what's involved in publishing. We want to offer you an opportunity to consider your vision and your capacity at your institution. We're gonna highlight adaptable resources that you can use if you decide to build a publishing program or support a publishing project. And we really want to lay the foundation for any platform or tool. We're not gonna talk about how to use Pressbooks, for example, or um, which tool may be the best. It can get really complicated. It's a broad landscape out there. And we hope to share information with you that can kind of work no matter where you or your faculty may land on the question of technology. So am I in the right place? Again, the short answer I hope is yes, you are in the right place. Uh, to give you a little bit more to make that decision, uh, if you are very new to open education, publishing can be kind of an overwhelming place to start. Again, you're very welcome to join us. However, in the past, uh, many of us have recommended starting with adoption programs. If you're just really new to open education, an adoption program can really help you lay the foundation at your institution, introduce the concept of open educational resources and open licenses, and give you um, kind of some groundwork before you jump into publishing. So if you are very new, uh, you might wanna look at the Creative Commons Certificate, uh, the OEN Certificate and OER Librarianship, uh, the Introduction to Open, the OER Starter Kit. There are a lot of resources out there if you're very new to open education more broadly. Um, this reminds me that uh, this slideshow and the associated links will be posted uh, to our orientation documents at the end of today. So if you'd like to access these slides, they will be available to you. Um, and I'll give you the link to that shortly. Uh, we also uh, have gathered some resources if you are an aspiring author, if what you're looking for is more like, how do I write an open textbook? Pub 101 may not be the right fit for you. We're going to talk about things like memorandums of understanding and developing timelines. Um, again, you're welcome to be here. Uh, but if you are an aspiring author, here are some resources that may be helpful to you if what you're really wanting to do is jump into um, writing an open textbook. And we also have other programs and infrastructure within the OEN that can help you um, if you're faculty at this point in your journey. Okay, so that is my setting the scene, am I in the right place, uh, quick overview. I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment. Oh, maybe I don't need to. I'm gonna launch a quiz. I don't think I need to stop sharing. So hopefully uh, you all have had a poll pop up on your screen. Please describe the likelihood of launching a publishing program at your institution or consortium in the coming year. Choose one that you think is the best fit for you. A, it's already happening, we're doing it, we're publishing. B, we're just about ready to go. C, we're thinking about it maybe one day, hold on. And D, I really don't think there's any way we're gonna be in a position to do this, but I wanna learn more and, and develop uh, professionally. So I'll give another moment to respond. Currently at 83% participation, thank you. Okay, a couple more seconds and then I'm gonna close the poll. and reveal our results. So most of you are thinking maybe one day I will set out on this adventurous journey and support the publishing of OER. A good portion of you are already doing this work, which is awesome. Um, and many of you are ready to go. So. This is another reminder of the shared abundance in the room. If you have already developed things, if you've thought about developing things and decided not to, whatever your experience, 
please feel welcome to share it in the chat as we begin our discussions and as we move through the weeks. There's a lot of collective knowledge and we invite all of you to share it, not just the, the facilitators or the people who are, who are talking, but also you as participants. So thank you for jumping in. We shall now carry on. Okay, so more specifically, what is Pub 101? So when we use the term Pub 101, we mean it as both a curriculum and an experience. It's a curriculum in that there is a Canvas course, it's three units, and then it's also this experience right now that you're in the middle of having. Uh, it's seven sessions of a synchronous conversation that you can um, join in you know, whenever your schedule allows. Again, it's meant to be an informal big picture orientation. It's not a class, there's no grades, there's no certificate at the conclusion. And so really come when you can, there will be videos and documentation if you're unable to make a session. We hope to have some fun with you um, and make this hour together enjoyable. Pub 101 continues to evolve. I actually just finished uh, writing a blog post about the history of Pub 101 because in preparing for this, I realized that we are now in our fifth year. And it's kind of fun to look back and see how Pub 101 has evolved from uh, some collective work that we've done as a group uh, supporting publishing. And so uh, once that blog post is published, we'll share it with you if you're, if you're interested. But really, it has kept changing because of the feedback we've received from you, because of the changes in the open education landscape. And we have this Pub 101 committee that I introduced to you earlier. We look at all of the feedback. There will be opportunities at the end of each unit in the Canvas curriculum to fill out a short feedback form, as well as at the end of our seven sessions. So really, truly, we want to know what you think, how we can continue to uh, make this better and apply for, for you and your situation. Finally, Pub 101 is meant to be a beginning. We don't have to say goodbye when it's over. Uh, you can be a part of the OEN community as you continue on with this work so that you feel less isolated and alone. I'd also like to talk uh, quickly about the spirit of Pub 101, if you will. And that is kind of going back to our guiding principles. Uh, we always will keep in mind that you're a human being, you're not a publishing machine. And so you'll hear a lot of our speakers talk about self-care and tips for um, you know, looking after yourself in what can be a, a fairly demanding area of open education. There are many people who want to help so that you do not feel alone, and there are many ways to publish. We're only going to be able to share a few options here. We do not mean to suggest that those options are superior or the way you should go. They're really just stories from the field. And again, we look to you. Please let us know what you need as we move along. Finally, a little housekeeping. Um, Amanda will be dropping the related links into the chat. Uh, the most important perhaps is the, what I call one-stop doc, because it has a nice ring to it. That's our orientation document. Some of you may have already seen this. Um, it went out with the Pub 101 invitations. It will be updated weekly with links to the slides from that week. Um, we also have a YouTube channel. If you wanna to subscribe to that channel, you'll know immediately once videos are posted, we are aiming to post those videos uh, before the next Pub 101 session is held. So within that week, that is our goal. So if you have questions about what we're doing or where to find something, try the one-stop doc first. I think uh, you will probably find your answer there. And if not, let me know. There is also class notes. Uh, class notes is something that we developed since we're not a formal program here. We're not within a course shell, you know, filling out discussion boards, but there may be times when we run out of time or you can't get your question in the chat and you'd like to continue the conversation. We develop class notes for that. It's a Google Doc. It's your space. And I invite you now to please take a moment and add your information to class notes. You'll see there's a table there just to share your name, your institution, and why you're at Pub 101. This is really helpful for us as well 
to, um, to get a sense of who you are and how we can um, meet your needs while you're in Pub 101. Oops. I'm gonna carry on, but please do um, drop your information into class notes sometime today. Okay, I mentioned that Pub 101 is two things, a curriculum and an experience. A little bit more about the curriculum. Uh, the Pub 101 committee recently revised the curriculum. It is now streamlined. Shorter is almost always better. And so it's three units instead of a whopping eight. Uh, previously, we were throwing in possibly everything, including the kitchen sink. And now we really are trying to make um, a more discreet experience so that you're not wading through a lot of different resources. It can be hard to choose. There's a lot of support out there. Uh, we've also included more examples. We added some case studies, uh, added some new resources, and just really tried to make sure that it was ready for prime time. A lot of care was taken to make the units as straightforward as possible. And these uh, meetings that we'll be holding together in person they're not teaching to the curriculum. We're not gonna go through it step by step. They're really meant to be more complimentary. Um, and so I encourage you to review the curriculum. I think it'll, it will connect, but we're not gonna lead you through it. Um, we're gonna kind of introduce you to it. Speaking of, unit one really focuses on defining an open textbook. And very briefly, I will say that in Pub 101, we talk about publishing open textbooks specifically. You can extrapolate to publishing OER and other resources more broadly, but our focus is on the textbook itself. It connects to the work that we do in the open textbook library. And what's unique about open textbooks is that they're free to the end user and they have permissions, usually a Creative Commons license that will allow for editing. And as all of you know, textbooks have structure. They're different from a monograph in that they have pedagogical elements that recur. The information is hierarchically organized. And all of that structure is really integral to accessibility, which is um, something that we'll be talking about next week. So when we're talking about publishing textbooks, those, those are kind of the working definitions of, of what we have in mind when we're, when we're talking about that. Just a short note that the units are really helpful. Um, a lot of what we will talk about, you'll find uh, in the units in terms of templates and resources and other helpful tips. Um, there's also what I hope are somewhat fun quizzes at the end of each unit if you wanna test your knowledge. None of that, um, none of that uh, data is kept, it's just a quiz for you. Okay, I think that concludes my long preamble. If you have any questions, please drop them in the chat. In the meantime, I'm very excited to introduce the two guests who are joining us today. We have Gabby Hernandez, who is the Open Education Librarian at the University of Texas in the Rio Grande Valley. And we have Sunny Pai, who's the Digital Initiatives Librarian and OER University of Hawaii Community College's campus co-lead. She's based at Kapolani Community College. So what we're gonna spend the rest of our time doing is chatting with Gabby and Sunny. I've prepared a few questions for them. If as we're going along, you think of questions that you'd like to ask them, please drop them in the chat and we'll keep an eye on those. Um, I'm also gonna go ahead and close out of the um, slide sharing so that you can see our faces and we can have kind of a, a more friendly conversation. All righty, so to kick us off, Gabby, how would you describe your publishing experience so far? What was your starting point? So we are still a very young publishing institution at UTRGV. Um, in thinking about the broad definition that Karen shared with us earlier, which I really loved about 
what is publishing or what can it be, we're kind of in that institutional repository, posting, archiving, adaption, editing, modifying, like that's that's kind of where we live right now. Um, we do have some faculty that are interested in kind of dipping their toe into the like full on publishing from scratch. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're sitting at the moment. In the last four years of our program, we've really been focused more on the OER adoption portion and just getting the word out and making sure that our faculty know what is OER, what is textbook affordability, what is open publishing, um, and of course, how does that different you know differentiate between open access publishing? Like you know, trying to really set these definitions. Um, so faculty have a very clear understanding, or we're hoping that they have a clear understanding of differences between. Um, all of those things and, and what could alternative course materials mean. So um, I have both participated in and highly recommend all those foundational courses that Karen described earlier, these uh, Creative Commons certificate, the um, OEN's OER certification, librarianship certification, uh, all of those resources really helped me feel confident in this OER and publishing space coming in, um, as some of us do, into like a, maybe a completely brand new role on campus that we're all kind of starting, we could be starting from scratch. And we knew from the beginning that we always wanted our library to one day become more of a publishing institution or, you know, attain press books. So we had always, we, we had been scaffolding what that could look like. Uh, and then we ended up with a press book uh, subscription, like kind of out of nowhere. We were like, oh, so we're here and we have it and, and let's go. <laughs> so uh, thankfully we had already kind of started that background work, preparing for that one eventual day. So we had some structure, but then, you know, once we actually were told, yes, we need to go, then we were just kind of able to kick our program into like a higher gear so we could get started. Um, and in that start, we also wanted to make sure we had like an information page out there for faculty to describe our publishing project and our publishing capabilities. And we wanted to be very transparent with the services that we could and also could not provide based on our capacity. Um, and a year later, here we are with three published titles and a few more in the works. So, you know, it's, it's, it's moving along. Congratulations on those publications, Gabby. And that that um, page you mentioned where you're clear about what you can and can't do, is that something you can share? Yes, I'll share that right now in the chat. Okay, super. And then Sunny, what about you? How would you describe your publishing experience so far in your starting point? Okay, um, well, regarding my starting point, I was part of the spring 2019 cohort and um, I had um, had some experience with open, open access and open source content management systems. So um, um, I brought that with me um, and um, working with Plone and DSpace and, and systems like that. Um, we, um, the University of Hawaii system, which is, uh, has 10 campuses around that time had, had a Pressbooks instance. And uh, we were starting to develop um, uh, books, textbooks for press books. Uh, we have, a, as I had said, we have a 10 campus system. So I'm working with my authors, with authors here at my college, uh, but it goes into a uh, 10 college um, supporting press book system. Um, and uh, what I was finding uh, back in 2019, I was having a conversation with an instructor who uh, I was having a difficult time um, persuading to consider either adopting or developing an OER textbook. Um, he kept saying that he really uh, wanted the support of a commercial publishing process, um, including editing. Editing was very important to him and layout. Of course, he was a math instructor. So um, it, it just, in, that was very intriguing to me. So I wanted to find out more about you know, um, what goes into the structure of a textbook. And this was around the time that um, Karen, I think, was advertising, I think it was the second cohort uh, for PUB 101. 
um, this was at OTNSI, so I kind of begged her to <laughs> let me join the cohort. Um, and so um, and so we started out with that. Um, this um, uh, this combined with um, uh, my application for a sabbatical to develop a um, science of sleep. Uh, to develop a textbook, an OER textbook, working with a science instructor. So um, um, I met, you know, I, I happened to find uh, a science instructor after I, my sabbatical had been approved. So that was my starting point. That was, a, that was the uh, test project that I was uh, being able to bring to Pub 101. I'm not sure uh, these days whether you have to have a textbook project to uh, start with Pub 101, but back then we had to have at least one or two. So that's that's how I got started off with the uh, Pub 101 project. It was it was an excellent experience. Um, I learned so much with um, about um, textbook structure and publishing, and um, it, it was just a really great experience. Um, yeah, so that's I think that's that's about where I. Uh, where I can contribute at this point. Yeah. Thanks, Sunny. And thanks for um, bringing us back to uh, some uh, reflections on kind of how Pub 101 has evolved. Um, Sunny's mentioning some deep history in terms of uh, we used to do a, a training in a particular uh, editing. Um, they're called Scribe. They're like a back office uh, editing service provider. They do a lot of publishing support. And so for a while we were learning their techniques for structuring documents. Anyway, it used to start um, very specifically and now Pub 101 is much more broad. So we, we decided to kind of back out of the very specific book required um, model that Sunny described. And now here we are with um, you know a more introductory, experience in terms of orienting people to kind of larger questions within publishing that can ground them before they move into more specific training around um, different technology, for example, or different platforms. Um, I will put a link to the uh, sleep textbook, um, or actually, do you have that up, Sunny? Could you drop a link? Sure. Yeah. And um, if you can't find it, I, I think I just have it on my clipboard somewhere, but it's a beautiful book that Sunny is discussing um, and it might be fun to take a look. In the meantime, I will move on to our next question. So um, Gabby, what are your open publishing goals, not only organizationally, but also for you personally or professionally? So we lined out our goal, outlined our goals pretty clearly so for our program goals, we have three, and it's provide affordable educational materials for students. We want to create diverse and inclusive materials, and we also want to engage in works that reflect our student population and allow them partic to participate in the creation of knowledge through open pedagogical practices. So that's really what we would love to have our publishing project achieve. Um, these goals also, uh, these goals resonate with us both organizationally, but also professionally and personally for myself. Organizationally, we are one of the largest Hispanic serving institutions uh, in the United States with a very high rate of Pell Grant recipients. So basically our entire community is an underserved population um, that can benefit from all of these goals. Personally, as a member of the same community, I want to ensure that our voices are heard and valued within educational materials. And then as a part of our library publishing project library guide, we created an inclusion, diversity, equity, and anti-racism and open publishing page. And it is our hope that these ideas and conversations will happen throughout the creation process instead of thinking of them as an afterthought. So just ensuring, I mean, we have such a such a unique population here at UTRGV that every voice is a voice that can be and should be amplified. So, um, you know, I, we want to make sure that we are utilizing our students and allowing them the ability to have their voices heard in textbook creation. Thank you so much. And um, we 
embrace the same approach that you'll find in unit one. We discuss diversity, equity, and inclusion in publishing, how you can think about that throughout the process so that, again, as Gabby said, it's not something at the end of the project where you think, oh, you know, should we do something here? But really it's motivating, inspiring, guiding the work um, and helping authors and others working on the project to involve more people um, so that the resource can, can reflect more people's experiences. Um, Gabby, I don't know if you have a link to that uh, page yeah. as well, but I think that would be great to share. What about you, Sunny, in terms of your open publishing goals, both organizationally and for you, Sunny? Okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm basically, for my college, I'm a one-person shop, and I do this um, um, on top of my assigned primary duties. Um, but I've been, uh, I've been able to leverage um, uh, across the 10 campuses. We have, we have um, OER um, champions or campus leads, as we say, across the 10 campuses. So we leverage what resources we can pull together um, um, in our individual institutions and, and we help each other out. So um, uh, that's, been, that's been very uh, helpful. Um, so because I am a one campus, um, uh, because I'm a one person shop, um, um, I have been focusing uh, a, a great deal on, um, you know, educating our community and educating also the, um, uh, focusing on the seven community colleges about OER, as Gabby was saying, kind of building that, um, that enthusiasm about open educational resources. And um, we do have the Pressbooks instance. Sometimes the Pressbooks instance is not the solution uh, for our authors. Um, so the Scribe solution um, ended up becoming a good one for um, the sleep textbook. I have also uh, facilitated um, Libertex. I facilitated um, a textbook in GitHub. Uh, <laughs> um, and um, uh, um, there's there's also quite quite a large uh, contingent of faculty who, faculty who want to develop in the uh, in the learning management system. Mm -hmm. So it seems maybe it's because I came from a tech background, but it seems like I I've had to be very flexible with um, um, platforms. And um, it's in fact we've even. Um, Karen, can, uh, Karen uh, has been involved in the Manifold project, and some uh, some of my uh, teammates and I have just come through a Manifold project. So we've we've uh, we're still uh, we're still trying to um, come to some decisions about platforms. Um, so we're kind of in that stage, uh, but right now um, I have uh, in order for me to get people to adopt. Um, I've taken a stance of uh, being very flexible with uh, platforms. Um, so uh, at this point, it, it looks like we might, as, as a team of uh, 10 campuses, we may need to start um, extending our um, developmental support um, platform-wise and also uh, mentoring-wise um, across the 10 campuses. So we're getting to a point where I might be helping out um, Windward Community College and not just Kapiolani Community College. Mm -hmm. So in a grassroots, uh, very organic way, we're kind of um, growing our support system. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we, we have a limited, uh, not, not all of our campus leads are um, um, very strong in technology. So we're trying to figure that out. Yeah, and I appreciate that point, Sunny, that um, those of you who are thinking about having your own publishing programs may want to consider. And that is, do you want to support faculty working in a variety of platforms and tools? Are you comfortable in that space? Um, do you want to consider what that support looks like, if so? Or would you rather say, if, you're in, if you think that this tool, be it Pressbooks, Manifold, Google Docs, Word, you know, there, it can be a lot of different things. If you think that this tool can work for your project, we can support you in it. Um, those are kind of 
two points along the spectrum as you think about projects and programs and technology, because it can quickly, as, as listening to Sunny illustrated, become fairly overwhelming if you have faculty in a variety of different subject areas and tools have different strengths. Um, and we all keep waiting for that one tool that's going to do everything perfectly, but I think it may be a long wait. Um, so, Gabby, back over to you. What would you say have been kind of the, the highlights or the big things that you've learned so far in your work supporting open publishing? Uh, fitting perfectly with everything we've said so far, I'm sure you all know that this process takes time. Um, it has taken us time to both build up the infrastructure for our faculty and to also get the word out about our services. Uh, we do have faculty interest, especially those who have already been using OER in their courses. Our faculty really love the idea of being able to create their own OER or engaging students in content creation, but it's also hard for faculty themselves to find the time to implement these practices. And it's really interesting in these last four years, I've this last year, I've really seen the transition and our faculty thought and interest on campus. Uh, I provide a few mini professional development grants for our faculty. And when I ask them, I ask them the question, do you want the open education librarian to help you find OER for your course? And then we also, I also ask the question, um, are you interested in learning more about modifying, remixing, or creating OER? And we used to get the majority of them saying, I want OER, I just want you to help me find OER, but now our, our faculty have seemed to have made the shift. So maybe we're at that point where, yes, they finally understand kind of where it's going after all of these years, and they're ready to dip their toe more into the other side. So I've had more requests for information about Pressbooks than I have about just specific, like, or general find me OER for this topic. So um, it's nice to see that transition because it definitely helps us better plan like where we're going in the future or are we on the right track? Like are our faculty actually ready for a publishing program, not just us as a library, but mm -hmm. are the faculty ready to take that next step? Yeah, that's so key. I often get swept up in what I think is a great next step and forget that I need to check in. <laughs> with the people who we want to serve and work with and see, wait, do they feel that way too? So that's such a good consideration. Sunny, what about you in terms of things you've learned? Well, let's see, um, kind of um, uh, um, following up on what Gabby had said, um, that is one of the challenges that we've had with faculty. They like to, um, our faculty don't necessarily or uh, are very shy about sharing their materials. So, and that's kind of what publishing is is about. And so, um, I we know that there's a lot of work going on. Uh, they tend to keep it in their uh, in the LMS or kind of hidden. Um, so we we developed a. Um, uh, professional development program that just basically that gives support both in training, for example, uh, $300 overload if you complete um, a six module um, OER 101 course, um, you know, with, with, the, with the strong lesson that the idea of this is to be able to publish something at the end and to, to share it with others who have uh, so willingly shared their materials with us and enabled us to do this work. Um, so we, we're trying to overcome the shyness aspect of it, um, um, and we're—I think we're getting getting some success. Uh, the um, website that I just shared is, uh, is some of the um, some of the projects that are in development uh, in development right now um, that we're hoping to see uh, the finished products uh, published later on. Um, so, so that's that's been a, um, a bit of a challenge. Um, some authors, though, interestingly enough, they just jump in and they just go for it, and that's that's the best thing. I get to sit sit on the sidelines and um, let them run with it. I wanna I wanna uh, make mention that the author who um, put together the um, uh, sleep textbook actually right now is working on a ten campus author project, a book sprint. Um, 
that project's uh, gone on for about two or three years and there are um, she's take, she took the principles that we learned together from Scribe in Pub 101 in terms of um, pedagogy and textbook structure. And um, she used some of those elements in this project. And we're really looking forward to having um, two of our main AMP courses, uh, textbook zero um, in fall. And this would be across our 10 campus system. So we're very excited about that. So in that sense, in that way, Pub 101 has really paid off, um, setting, setting the groundwork for uh, an understanding of what you can do with textbooks and how you can structure them. Did that answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot involved, especially when you're reflecting on, you know, the last few years. It is a long and winding road. And so it, it does address the question because it raises all of the different um, competing priorities and considerations involved in, in publishing and I think open ed more broadly. And we only have one question left that I've prepared for Gabby and Sunny. So um, I invite all of you, if you have questions um, that are on your mind, maybe things that we haven't even touched on yet, please do feel free to put them in the chat because we probably will have a, a couple minutes to, um, to explore those questions too. So please let us know if you have any questions. And then I just have um, one more question of my own and some closing slides after that. So uh, keeping in mind the uh, folks who have joined us today, um, many of them are thinking about starting a publishing program. What would you recommend to people who are just getting started in open publishing? I would recommend creating a process that works for your institution, institutional needs and your departmental capacity. A lot of the times when we look at other open publishing programs and we're trying to figure out which one you'd like to use as a model, remember that we're rarely comparing apples to apples. Um, the other institution that you're looking at may have different funding structures, more or fewer people, people assigned to work on such projects. I like how Sunny is saying she's a, a one man shop. We are, we have two, but still like with all the other things that come with open education and scholarly communications. I mean, it's like just the scholarly communications hat is like a hundred jobs. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it, it can be really hard. And, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh man, we only did three you know, we only, we only have three in our library, but then I have to think like, no, we, we did three, like that's a lot. We, we were able to get that through. Um, so, you know, keep those things in mind when you're looking at other publishing um, uh, institutions that are out there. Um, there are, yeah, there's just a whole host of things to take into consideration before you compare yourself to somebody else. Um, and always take a look at your departmental capacity and the needs um, and create a program that fits within your parameters. Um, you can always start small and grow the program um, and start offering more faculty support as you progress, but it's kind of hard to shrink once you've gotten somewhere maybe over capacity and then you go, oh wait, this is too much, I need to shrink back down. Um, and that's also why we kind of outlined, like this is definitely what we can support you with, um, and that sometimes can be a little bit scary because like as librarians, we want us to provide all the support. Like we want to be there all the time, but you know, setting your boundaries also very healthy uh, in your work to make sure that it's very, so the faculty understand exactly how much support they can have and they can decide themselves whether that's enough support for them or you know, they want to wait a little bit longer for more support when hopefully there's the time and the capacity for that. Yeah, a hundred percent. Comparison is so difficult um, and not a good way to enter into anything personally or professionally. Um, even when you see a really inspiring model program, um, it's just a, it's a different place. It's a different context. And um, I really appreciate everything that you highlighted, Gabby. We have a lot of questions coming in, so we may be able to make use of class notes here before uh, the end of the day but we'll try to cover as much as possible. Sunny, anything you wanna add about recommendations for people just getting started and then we'll turn to the chat. Yes, everything that uh, Gabby has said, thumbs up. Um, 
everybody in the room, um, Pub 101 is 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 a unique and very supportive learning experience. Karen, Karen is absolutely right. Um, you'll learn a lot and you'll feel very supportive. It's a great community, so I really highly recommend it. Um, the workload is huge, and and you and you have to you know um, work strategically because you're educating, bringing people on board, uh, you know, selling the concept while you're trying to um, um, focus on the output, um, the textbook at the at the other end. So go ahead. Go ahead, Karen. <laughs> yeah, just, just to add to that, a book, I mean, a book is really major. A book is a multi-year <laughs> project usually, and it's it can be very, very complex. So, um, okay, jumping into the first question. For faculty that have created content and use it in their course and are eager to convert this content into an open textbook, what do you think is a good way to assist them? Uh... I could jump in really quickly. Um, sure. uh, shall I? Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so the sleep textbook was an example. Um, she was teaching from notes and, um, uh, she, you know, commercial publishers were asking um, to uh, publish her work. Uh, then she found out about OER. Fortunately, she was passionate about um, diversity and racial equity. And um, after we had a conversation, oh, you have the blog post. Okay, so just you can read in the blog post. So basically, we we pulled the material together and scribe scribe really helped with the editing process. I don't know if that helps, but yeah. So um, I basically in that I played the role of a uh, connector, a networker, and uh, a project manager. And I think a part of it also just goes to making sure that you know you're putting out there what your services are because we have received at least one faculty who has sent us our stuff and said hey i'm using this and i i think it could be helpful for others um so it's just building that name and reputation of like please reach out to us we're here to support anything when it comes to publishing or open anything and so with them uh we are just taking it slow so they just gave us the Word document and we're going through and making sure that everything is actually shareable, making sure the, you know, the licensing is compatible, ensuring, you know, where did they get these documents? And so it's that kind of process is how, how we're kind of doing that at UTRGV. And I'm going to throw this in really quickly. There's always the issue of year-to-year um, uh, -year budgeting. Um, so there's a whole aspect of uh, project management and fiscal management which we don't have time to get to, but it can be challenging because a book takes longer than a year. Yes, yes. Um, and we will touch on budgeting um, in, in several of the sessions. That's a good thing to highlight. I'd also like to highlight in the chat, thanks to Phoebe who also replied to that question. And I think Stephanie, who's also addressing this question in terms of resolving some of the complexities between content that has a different license on it, um, so thank you all for your conversation uh, in the chat. Christy, I will quickly answer your question about whether there's a list of institutions that have programs going that we can learn from. In the Pub 101 curriculum, you will find a selection of institutions that are publishing and a lot of their related documentation, their MOUs, things like that. So absolutely, we share some of that content. I don't know of an exhaustive list, um, that's an interesting idea that I can take to our advisory group that's constantly developing uh, resources and support for people in open publishing. If you are a member of the Library Publishing Coalition, our friends over there do keep a list of um, people engaged in publishing more broadly. Um, let's see, Jennifer asks if you have suggestions for how to work collaboratively with other institutions of higher ed in your state on open publishing? Yeah, I reached out to all of the OER practitioners within my system and just kind of got us all into a group. And now we have a standing meeting that's very uh, low key, drop in, drop out when you can. So that way we at least all know each other. We have a, a background. So when there's things that come out like federal grants, state grants, we all immediately 
you know, jump in and say, hey, are y'all doing this? Are you working on this? I can see that growing, you know, into, you know, other systems, you know, making it larger, but that's how we started just kind of small and system wide. And it is so beneficial. So don't be shy, reach out to the other ones, uh, the other people who are doing the same work as you. And, um, and it, I, I think it definitely helps. Same here in Hawaii. Um, for our 10 campuses, we started meeting uh, like in 2015, and we haven't missed a, me a meeting yet. It's uh, it, We do it one, once a month. It started off with librarians. We brought in instructional designers, and now we also have faculty and administrators. Um, so it's, it's grown, and we've also extended the invitation to uh, BYU, which is a private university. So we're, we're open to others in the state who would like to join. Um, so if there's, you know, like, for example, when we decided to have a set up a relationship with Libratex, everybody was involved, they got to take a look at the platform, um, you know, our projects on Pressbooks, we get, we talk about it together. Thank you. I think we're, we're doing a pretty good job of making our way through these questions. So, so thank you all, including those of you participating in the chat. Gabby, there's a request to share a link to the open pedagogy project um, that you mentioned. Yes, I am putting the link in the chat. Uh, unfortunately, because of our capacity, we haven't been able to do as many open pedagogy projects as we had hoped. That's definitely one of our goals and somewhere we're trying to get. But I do have a one and I'll, I'm getting that link for you in the chat right now. <clears throat> Thank you. So in the two minutes we have remaining, we can give it a shot and try to address the final question, which is talking about a little bit more about the reluctance that you've run into in pursuing buy-in or participation from folks on campus. Was it, uh, as you mentioned, Sunny, the desire to use a more traditional publishing model, or were there any other um, specific pushbacks that either of you have heard in terms of moving into the open publishing space? Um, well, there, there was, uh, I, I think I had mentioned the shyness, um, the, the particular author um, that, uh, who said he really wanted editing and layout support, it's math, so yeah, that's, that is much more challenging. He did end up going with a commercial textbook uh, publisher. He did negotiate a low um, buying price, um, so part of, some of the message went across to him. But then right after that, the university, our system uh, passed a policy that uh, uh, faculty cannot use their own textbooks in their classes because it was a conflict of interest. So I, I'm not sure where he is, but um, that, that uh, was an interesting story for that particular instance. Um, the other thing about textbook publishing is faculty always want to tweak. They want to edit, they want to tweak, they, they want an easy interface. So those who chose Pressbooks um, are, you know, are enjoying that capability. Whereas some people are satisfied, like in the scribe textbook, they're, they're happy with that one edition. And then at some later point, we probably would have to, you know, start up a whole new process. Thank you. What I'll answer just if, if, if you don't mind, Karen, just a few seconds. What I've the biggest pushback we've seen at UTRGV is departments that have to all adopt the same book and that some want to use OER, but they're not allowed because the department has to. And so what I'm doing, especially for those faculty or those, it's just making sure they know that I'm here. So that way, when it comes time to do this the textbook selection, they can reach out. So I'm, I'm always there and open for support, but never push because I do realize there are certain departmental things that I just can't control, like departmental selection. Yeah, yeah, it's a great reminder. We cannot control everything. <laughs> um, we will take a look at the chat to see if there's anything that we missed, and then the Pub 101 committee can chime in and, and um, engage in further conversation in the chat. I'm just going to wrap up for us in the remaining few seconds um, and thank our Guests, sorry, I have a very hiccupy system, as you can see, as you now join me in my version history. Um, the short story is that, drum roll, we are doing this. Um, this is happening and there is a, a community and resources here for you. 
we can and do support the creation of academic content for students. We don't have to rely on commercial vendors. Students, I think, are a critical touchstone throughout the creation process. It can be really easy to forget why you're doing something when you're working on a long-term book project, but thinking about students, putting them at, at the center of the why, I think is really motivating and um, clarifying. Again, you're not alone. Everyone has something to contribute to this process. Now, in terms of next week, we will be welcoming Jacqueline Frank. She's gonna talk about accessibility and there will be a related activity if you wanna try out your hand at making a document more accessible. Your homework, if you so choose, is outlined in the orientation documents and here on this slide. And then finally, thank you again for joining us and your commitment to student success, your willingness to learn more, your interest in joining us and your engagement in the process. Thank you so much, Gabby and Sunny, for kicking us off and sharing your stories. We look forward to seeing all of you again next week. And in the meantime, please take care. Farewell. Thank you, everybody.